Hi everyone, welcome to this week's lesson. Today we are talking about the fruits of the spirit again and we have two more left. Can you remember the ones we've talked about already? Let's go over it together. The last few weeks we spoke about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and today we're going to talk about gentleness. When you hear the words gentle or gentleness, you think of being soft and tender, right? Let's hear. We got a few examples. So has an adult ever told you to be gentle while holding a baby? I'm holding the baby by the feet. <laughs> right, yeah, sometimes we're told to be gentle with the baby. What about an adult telling you to be gentle with this? China. Got to be gentle and soft with those things. What about if you're helping carrying groceries in the house and this is in the bag? Well, a package of these. That's right. We have to be gentle with these too because they're they're breakable things and and when you're too rough, you could possibly break it. See, I'm going to put my egg in here, but I got to be gentle cuz I don't want to break it. Well, so being gentle, being careful, and soft and tender, those that's part of it. But gentleness describes more than that. It can kind of describe your character. It used to be that a man from a noble family or a family of high social or political standing was called a gentleman. The appropriate way for a gentleman to behave would be considerately to be considerate towards others, to treat others kindly, and to be chivalrous. Those things are ways to describe gentleness. Gentleness is being strong, but being loving as well. Well, we're going to read from the Bible and take a look at a king who really wasn't that gentle, may have been a bit more rude or mean, and wasn't very good at considering people's feelings. The story that I'm going to read to you from the Bible about that king is found in 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 1 to 15. Now, you can read along with me if you'd like in the Bible. I'm just bringing up my Bible right now. Um, I read from the International Children's Version because some of the words are a little easier for us to understand. Um, but again, if you want to read along, it's found in 1 Kings chapter 1, sorry, chapter 12, verses 1 to 15, okay? Rehoboam went to Shechem because all the Israelites had gone there to make him king. Jeroboam, son of Nebat, was still in Egypt. He had gone there to escape from Solomon. When Jeroboam heard that about Rehoboam being made king, Jeroboam returned to Egypt. So the people sent for him. Then he and the people went to Rehoboam. They said to him, your father focused, forced us to work very hard. Now make it easier for us. Don't make us work as hard as your father did. Then we will serve you. Rehoboam answered, come back to me in three days and I will answer you. So the people left. Some of the elders had helped Solomon make decisions during his lifetime. So King Rehoboam asked them what he should do. He said, how, how do you think I should answer these people? They answered him, you should be like a servant to them today. Serve them and give them an, a kind answer. If you do, they will serve you always. But Rehoboam did not listen to this advice. He asked the young men he had grown up with. They advised him in making decisions. Rehoboam said, the people said, don't make us work as hard as your father did. How do I, how do you think I should answer them? What is your advice? The young man answered, those people came to you and said, your father forced us to work very hard. Now make our work easier. So you should tell them my finger is bigger than my father's whole body. My father forced you to work hard, but I will make you work even harder. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with whips that have sharp points. 
Rehoboam had told the people, come back to me in three days. So after three days, all the people returned to Rehoboam. At that time, King Rehoboam spoke cruel words to them. He did not listen to the advice that the elders had given him. He did what the young men told him to do. Rehoboam said, my father forced you to work hard, so I will force you, give you more work. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with whips with sharp points. So the king did not do what the people wanted. The Lord caused this to happen. He did this to keep the promise he had made to Rehoboam, son of Nebat. He had made this promise through Ahijah, the prophet of Shiloh. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, what do you think? Do you think that he... Sorry, does it sound like this is a king the people would want to follow? King Rehoboam was not very gentle. God wanted Israel's people to follow him, to be considerate towards others, not to be mean or selfish. But then there's another king in the Bible, a very gentle king. In Matthew 21, verse 5, it says, Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, a fall of a donkey. What do you think this verse is talking about? That's right. The prophet Zechariah wrote this about Jesus. He describes Jesus as gentle, which means that even though Jesus was strong and powerful, he was considerate and acted out of kindness towards others. Jesus was the opposite of the rude and mean king Rehoboam. In fact, Jesus was so considerate towards others that he was prepared to lay down his life for us. He made a way for us to be forgiven for our sins. Sometimes we can be selfish and mean like King Rehoboam, but Jesus still loves us and he takes our rude and mean ways and he gives us his gentleness, right? I really hope you enjoyed that lesson. There's a lot of new words that I hope that you're able to follow along with and, and read in your Bible. And I hope you remember that sometimes, yes, we can even feel a little like we don't want to be kind and be gentle and kind of want to be rude, but Jesus gives us those kind and gentle ways when we have him in our hearts, right? So this week you received in your envelope some awesome worksheets and even a craft. Um, I have it here with me. It's not done yet. We're gonna do it later. I've got my paper and then my basket. Emma and I are gonna decorate and cut, we're gonna cut ours out. And then you've got all the fruits of the spirit that you can color in or paint or, or maybe you don't even wanna color them in. You wanna leave them the way they are and stick some stickers and that's totally cool too. And then you can cut them out and you can glue them onto the paper and into your basket so they can so that way you can try and remember all these different fruits of the spirit and this will be a great reminder if you put it up maybe on your fridge the last thing i want to do is i want to read the memory verse with you it's on the delicious grapes which are my favorite fruit um, and it's found in philippians chapter 4 verse 5 and it says, let your gentleness be evident to all, which is just like what we've learned today, to remember to keep our gentleness a part of us and to be like Jesus and, and others will be able to see that in, all our, in what we say and what we do. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you later. Take care. Bye.